Welcome back, everybody. Today we're going to be doing this cute little gnome or leprechaun, whatever you want it to be. And uh, I'm going to be doing it a little bit differently uh, this time with uh, acrylic paint, but this time we're going to be using it in more of a watercolor uh, consistency. So you can use acrylic paints watered down on paper and it will adhere. As long as you have a porous uh, substrate that will um, take in the particles, you can water down acrylic. It's when you have primed a canvas or a piece of paper with uh, gesso or whatever that if you put too much water in it, it has the possibility of peeling on you. So I didn't want to get into uh, watercolor, especially on Thursdays, because I, I like to stick to mixed media or acrylic painting. But uh, yeah, so hopefully you'll enjoy this way of painting. And I will be working with some fairly small um, brushes because there's the printable traceable that is available to all my members on YouTube and Patreon. And if you want to find out more about the membership, you can find the link below uh, in the description. So we have mostly greens, a little bit of gray in here, some yellows. A little bit of brown, but pretty well all, a lot of it is the green color. And this green color here, I'm going to try and stick to it as um, it shows in the picture, which means it's going to be a little more on the um, permanent green side. So uh, I'm just going to be using these Americana and Delta Ceramico craft paints. And this one's forest green, and then there's spring green. And they're fairly bright, and uh, they match pretty well for what I'll be doing in here. And we can lighten it with uh, this yellow one here, which is yellow light. I also have uh, black, brown, um, peony, pink, berry red, and a flesh tone for the skin and a blue calypso blue. Uh, I'm going to keep the background fairly neutral. So I'm not going to be painting in the background. You can if you want to. Uh, that's up to you. But I thought it would be kind of cool just to have a white background in this one. I could change my mind as I go. <laughs> that's always possible. So like before, I always start from the back and work my way to the foreground. So you can download your traceable, and there is a picture of this also on uh, the memberships, and you can uh, get a screenshot of that if you want. And we'll start off with this uh I guess it's a tree stump house type of thing. <laughs> and we'll be uh, using the green. So I'm going to take this uh, forest green. some on my palette and maybe I will add a little of this also it's a little different a little lighter and then the yellow 
Now, if you like your uh, greens to be a little bit more on the olive side, you can use that. You don't have to stick to this palette. Dab a yellow and probably a little bit of white. And where did I put my white? Oh, there it is. And I've got just some titanium white here. I wonder if it's clogged. And a towel to wipe my brush off. Uh, let's see. So when we do this type of uh, painting, this style of painting, I'm going to use uh, quite a bit of water. Uh, they're very small areas, and I'm not going to coat necessarily the whole thing in um, one base coat. This could be done a little bit differently. Not a whole lot, but a little different. So we'll start off um, by doing some of the wood. I guess it's wood in the background here. So there's a little bit peeking through some uh, shadowed areas too. Oh, I guess so. I'll need a little bit of black. Put a little black on my palette here. And the, uh, it's almost uh, off white. So we'll just take some of this white over here in front of the blob of white. And I'm just going to add a smidge of black to it. Black is very, very potent. And then a little bit of yellow. Just to... I don't want to necessarily um, gray gray. I want it kind of earthy looking. And I want a lighter shade and a little bit darker. Okay. And water, lots of water on my palette when I'm doing this because I'm going to use this as a more or less a watercolor effect. So I am going to be able to see my lines, but for this particular piece um, that's fine for me I can still see where all the lines are so that way we can either go back in and do uh, your real fine details with either colored pencil or you can continue with uh, your Paint if you want. And you can refer to the photo of the reference. So I'm just going to paint some of this in here where I think these I guess it kind of a shingle in here. It's a little bit different color, but not a whole lot. This, there's one here. And then they have all these uh, little leaves of some sort. They kind of remind me of 
some of them look like clover. Other ones kind of remind me of um, nasturtium. So whatever you want it to be. Or you could make it something else. Ivy. Just like that. Not much. Very simple. I'm using very small brush. And then we'll continue down into the body of that tree. And I'm going to go over some of these uh, smaller little pieces of foliage down here just so that it's easier because so I can still see through it. And then I'll paint a little bit of a thicker uh, consistency of paint on top. So that's why it's always good to go from your background to the foreground. Now some people like to paint one area completely before they move on to another. Everybody paints differently. You kind of have to find your own style as far as um, how you like to paint. I tend to paint, uh, especially in the beginning, the color with color. So I'll use up wherever I need that color and then go on to the next color. So that could be just because of uh, doing streams. It's a little easier that way. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think I'll put one in here. A little bit more. Then we'll go back in and put shadows in and all that stuff once we're done doing that. All right. Now you can either do the shadows or the leaves and then the shadows. Um, the shadows of this particular um, wood area would be a little bit more on the bluish side. So I'm going to add a little bit of this Calypso blue to my palette. I don't need a lot. There's not a lot of blue in this. Just a smidge. And I'm going to put a little bit of that blue in this mix now. Just to give it more of a shadowy color. And I'm going to just the smallest amount of black. Because that's really strong black. Okay. And then... And water it down because this is going to be a really watered mix. Let me make it a little bit darker. So when you water it down, it's uh, it's a little lighter. Well, that's not bad. Could be a little bit darker though. I'm going to put a little more blue. In there. Maybe a touch more black. Get some off. A little bit more water. Okay. So it would be shadow around this leaf here. And shadows have a fairly hard edge because it's representing a leaf in the shadow of it. So 
So we can, uh, you can refer to the reference photo for that. If you're not sure where to put the, all the shadows. Hmm, let's see, around here. It's fairly condensed in here because there's a lot more leaves on top. And we'll put in some lines for wood and that type of thing too. And even darker shadowed areas. This is just the beginning. It's all about layers. Okay, up into there, a little bit more, a little darker. Uh, these will be, mm, some of them will be lighter, some of them will have a little bit of shadowing. Wherever there's leaves over top of it, it'll be a little darker in here. And if you see any... Um, division of how they're overlapping each other. There'll be a little bit of shadow in there. And we'll even make it darker yet again. This is just the beginning. So again, look at your leaves. Where's the leaves? or even the shadows from the thickness of those lapping over each other. They would cast a bit of a shadow. Just have to play with it. Like so. I might go in with colored pencils and do the real fine details. We'll put uh, a lot of this in with paint though, but I really like using colored pencil. I haven't done a lot of that lately, so I thought I would get back into that. Do you guys like using color pencil? Let me know. I really do. Okay. Maybe a little bit. Oh, let's get some brown out. This is just bittersweet chocolate. Uh, raw umber or raw sienna. Depending on uh, what color you like as wood green. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of that. I think, yeah, let's put it in with this. And we'll, we'll also, uh, let's take a little bit of a fan brush. So I have a really um, small fan brush. It's bristle, and it's a Princeton Select Bristle Fan, number 
10, zero. So it hasn't been wet, but I'll dip the very ends in and then you can just put your, it could be even darker. Let's make that a little bit darker. Okay. It can be. Don't you don't have to stick to what I have. You can add more. Okay, and then real dark in here. Well, not real dark, I guess, a little bit lighter. There's kind of a beveled edge on the door. That can be a little bit darker. Take some of that water off. Yeah. And then just right at the top, there's a little bit of a darker edge there. There's a little crack in the wood, but we can do those later. Hey, Devin, Kim. Oh, thanks. It's up in the uh, membership page, Devin, if you want to download it. It's, I'm going to put in uh, the black in the interior of the door. We're using acrylic paint but watering it down. And we can do that with this paint because I'm working on paper. So this paper is a uh, cardstock. And I'm not like putting big washes on or anything, but you can use it for doing this type of painting. And the acrylic won't, um, peel or anything. I know a lot of people are scared of watering acrylic down, but that only happens if you're working on a substrate that is um, been primed and has lost most of the, um, it's not, uh, you, what's the word I want? Um, It's got tooth to it. It's absorbent. If it's lost its uh, absorbency, then the paint will sit on the surface. And that's when you end up with problems of uh, peeling or flaking. But if you're using paper, which is a non-porous substrate, and you can use it in a way of watercolor. All right. So this is done a little bit differently than what I would typically uh, do my paintings. So now we're gonna um, just play with some of these greens. They're a little brighter than what I um, usually I like more into the uh, olive colors, but 
I love I love this little illustration, so I thought I would use it. But I want it watered down like a watercolor though. So you guys uh, having a nice day? It's sunny here, but it's still pretty cold. So then I'm just going to go in and paint with these and I can add different shades of green. They don't all have to be the same. They can be all kinds of colors. You can add a little bit of the dark, the light, mix them. Just have fun with it. Now, if you got watercolors, you could use this um, with watercolor, too. I just thought it would be interesting to show you. You don't need watercolors. You can use acrylic paints or craft paint and just play with things. And we'll do some dark areas, too shadows, that type of thing. I think I missed a area where the I don't know what you call it. <laughs> Your shingles are overlapping. I'm just mixing it up as I go. Not too worried about it. Just have fun with it. Not sure what these um, leaves are supposed to represent. They kind of look like clover, but not quite. Kind of remind me of uh, nasturtium. So the little uh, bigger ones would be a little more detail on them. And the ones that are kind of hiding behind, you can make those a little darker because they would be shadowed. And some of these are kind of just generic shapes that I've done. And you can just make them whatever you want. So I'll put them in a, a base coat and then I'll probably go back in and either lighten or darken areas. We'll see. Hey, Dot. Snowy England? Oh, no, Dot. Oh, your spring flowers. Are they all covered up? Was it just a sprinkle? Or did you get a pile? It's crazy, crazy weather. This one's fairly light.
four inches. Wow. Well, hopefully you'll get some warm temperatures and it'll all go away for you. That's so disappointing for you. My stuff isn't even, it's still covered with snow. So it's not even attempting to come up. <laughs> Hopefully, though, we'll get um, some warmer conditions. Although the two-week forecast doesn't look that great. Looks like we're going to have pretty cold. Highest is plus two through the two weeks. And it's always minus seven, minus nine at night. So... Oh, it's sleet. Not fun. What are you going to do? You just have to bear with it, I guess. Not much you can do about it. So I'm not really, you know, too worried about if I'm uh, accurate as far as the reference photo with the leaves. I'm just going along with it, making my own colors here, just making it interesting. The only thing I'm keeping in mind is that some of the uh, leaves would be a little darker underneath. So I'm putting, trying to put a lot of them that are on the top to be a little bit on the uh, lighter side and then the darker ones underneath. So you can go back and forth or and then I'll put another bit of uh, shadow color in there too. A little. Little darker in there. And you could always go back in with your um, colored pencils too. Okay. So I thought this would be cute for St. Patrick's Day. But you could use this for any time, actually. It doesn't have to be just St. Patrick's Day. It could be whatever. Play with it. Okay, 
And this guy is going to be fairly light. So I'm going to add a little bit more white to that yellow there. Uh, this is a really nice way of painting because you get to see your line work. And that's why when I made this pattern for you, I made sure that the lines were fairly thin. That way it's not too thick of a line for you. Now, if you wanted to have it uh, a little bit less black, you could actually uh, put a coat of gesso, a light wash of gesso over top of this, and it would um, bring down those colors a little bit. It's up to you. So what do you want me to paint next for next thing coming up is Easter. So what do you like? Do you want to see flowers? Do you want to see more illustrative gromes type of thing or um, landscapes? What do you want? A bit of, of uh, white there, soften some of this, bring some of that in there. A bit lighter on the top here. It's starting to curl. So put some of that in there. Just some white on my brush. Joan, good to see you. Hope you're doing well. More white on this side. Like so. 
And we'll bring it down into there a little bit. Um, this one can be a little bit on the greeny side, I think. A little bit darker. adding a little bit of difference in there. Mm. This one's white or almost a uh, soft yellow. A little bit of a this one has a little bit of orangey color in it. So it's real nice to be able to see these lines, I must say. Let's put a little bit of red on my palette here. Just a dab. And make a little bit of an orange color. Water down. green. It's kind of a multicolored leaf. And we'll add other colors to it later when it's dry. Let's fix this one up a little bit. Kind of darken the center and then kind of, it's like a shooting star. The veining. A little bit lighter. Right around the top here, more on the yellow side. You like whatever I'm going to do? <laughs> A 
Uh, let's see. We'll put a screen in here. Kind of a mix mash. Actually, this here and down here we could also use a little bit of uh, fan brush work. Or stippling because there's uh, grasses and all kinds of stuff in there. Just mix your colors up so it gives it interest. You're not sure what it is, but let's see. I know there's some rocks. Maybe we'll put those rocks in. Oh, actually, I'll use this for the rock here. And there's a few little, uh, looks like English daisies that are in here. Just have fun with it. This rock right here, a dark side to it. Let's do these dark too. Some pebbles or more like cut rock. Oh, we'll add a little bit of green or not green, uh, red to that just to mix it up a bit. So it's not all the same. Give a little difference. Even add a little bit of white. There are all kinds of colors to rocks. Then we can go back over it with uh, leaves and that type of thing. There's one there and one here. I'm just doing the sides where the shadow would be. one in here somewhere. It's kind of hard to see when it's all drawn like this. It was down in here somewhere. Oh, let's put it right here. Change it up. Okay. And that's good. And let's now let's add a little bit more softness to it. I'm gonna warm it up a little bit. And we can oh that's more green. Mm, let's put some more brown in there. A little bit more white. 
light color. I can always go back in and add stuff to them. Color pencil, put little dots and cracks and that type of thing in them if you want. bit of white to this green here. Just change it up a little bit for the ground ones. Give them a little bit of a different color. Kind of makes them like it's a different plant. Always make sure you put it in other areas too. So this is just, I'm just base coating some of these on, not really finishing them. Glad de detail to them uh, with uh, highlights and stuff like that, veining. Let's put some over here. Let's see, maybe that there. Something there. Can't figure it out what exactly it is, but we'll just make a shape <laughs> with green on it. You could use Posca pens for this too. Just keep mixing it up so that it looks interesting. So being that it's green, you're naturally going to assume it's some type of foliage. It's kind of like paint doodling. <laughs> little leaves here so it's just the basically the shape of your brush mark you can do those anywhere so let's put some right in here Do this leaf right here. And it's kind of the same as these up here, so a little brighter. Some dark streaks.
Yeah. Anyways, we'll do those two. I don't know if this is boring for you guys or. I just thought it'd be interesting to show you how you can use your your acrylic paint as a watercolor. Now, naturally, you're not going to get the blooms and stuff like that, but it's fun. It's quick, satisfying. Bit of a lighter shade on this one here. More yeah, uh, white in there. Now, every time you use white in your mix, though, it will cover up a little bit. It becomes a little bit more opaque. So just keep that in mind. The more you put in, the more opaque it's going to be. This one can be a little more on the greeny side. Like I said, you can mix them up, make them a little bluer, a little yellower. A little bit of yellow and maybe on the top here. I think, isn't uh, Daylight Savings coming up? When is that? See, I'm thinking spring. Light one right in here. It's a little bit of 
blue green shade and center. Spray it out. It does move a little bit if it if you have enough water on your paper. Just to let you know that. So does anybody know when daylight saving time is? Okay, that's looking pretty good. Okay, so I want to get a fairly dark, dark in there. So I'm going to use this black. And I'm going to take this dark green. I want it fairly dark. So in between a lot of these leaves, like in the very back of the background in this part, it's really dark, very, very shadowed. Now you don't have to put it all in with black. You could add some dark green too, because there would probably be some other leaves in there so if you want to put more darker uh, green leaves in there you could do that i'm just going to put in a few dark areas here and maybe Whatever white areas are left, I'll make those uh, fairly dark green. Just dabbing here and there. And water it down a little bit. You can go over um, some of the areas too if you don't like the green that you put on. There would be some pretty dark areas shadowed in there. And it helps um, bring up, up the uh, green of the leaves too in areas. I heard someone mention it was daylight saving this weekend, but I'm oh okay. I knew it was coming up soon, but wasn't sure when. It's usually in March. They've just confused everybody when they started changing when it was before. So now no one really knows. <laughs> I wish they would just leave it.
So do you guys uh, use craft paint or do you like artist grade better? I tend to go um, for the craft paint myself. I really like it. I get, I don't know whether it's because I'm so used to it. Um, I don't do a whole lot of canvases though. So that could be a lot to do with it. Use both craft and artist, yeah. I do like craft paint for when I do art journaling. So now I don't have to worry about the pages sticking together. I guess that's why I use it a lot of the time. It's just easier. That one thing that I don't have to worry about. I'm just going around some of these with a really watered down consistency. Around some of these uh, leaves. Just to give that shadowed effect a little more oomph. Be shadowed Put more in there. Now you don't have to get this fussy. But like I said, and I've told you before, I love detail. It's my go-to thing. Just seems to bring everything alive. Shadow here a little bit. Remember the shadows of the leaves would be fairly um, they're not blurred. You can see the shadows. Okay, that looks good. Um, I'm going to take my little brush here and um, some of this brown, I think. And I'm just going to put some marks on these tiles. So it looks more like wood. 
like a, a cedar shake. good and we'll go back in with a uh, colored pencil probably and define some of those a little bit more all right so a little bit of umber with a little red uh, maybe a little bit of white just going to make kind of a reddish brown so I can do my stems I'm going to bring this one over that leaf And oh, I forgot to do that leaf. Um, can mix a little green with it too. Change it up a little bit. green in there you could use Posca for this too Okay, let's fix that leaf here. Um, I'll have to make it a little bit of another color. Let's see. White. And we'll put grasses in. Now with the grasses and the little bit of fine, more fine um, detailed work, you could use colored pencils. Because we're using craft paint, um, gives you that ability of using the colored pencils because it's got a texture to it. White in there. Let's give that look of um, dimension and a little bit of a darker gray or green back here with this one that's hiding behind it. And maybe in here, be darker. And that's part of the leaf there. Let's fix that up. 
right in here. They're cute. I missed a, a rock. Right there. A little bit lighter on the top. And let's put a little bit of green, whatever these are here. You could actually put a bunch of uh, toadstools in too if you wanted to. That'd be cute. This one here is darker. And some more in here. A little darker underneath that leaf right in here. Not sure what that is. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Joan. Yeah, they're easy. Just play. Play with it. Okay, so let's... Let's do his hat. So his hat's going to be very similar. Uh, so it's the green. Maybe a little bit lighter. More yellowy. Some white in there. So it'd be lighter on this side, the lightest side, and then uh, the shadow would be a little darker. So I'm just going to paint this lighter color kind of all over, and then we'll put the shadows in. It's a little easier that way. This is some kind of a crest. Maybe we'll put that in gold because they, the leprechauns, they love their gold. That's one thing you could put in as a bunch of gold coins laying around on the ground. That'd be cute. This little hat. Oh, he's cute. And then a little bit more lighter color for his sleeve here. And right here. And I'm going to put his pants in this color too. And then there's kind of a pattern on his pants. Or the, yeah, I guess that's his pants and his tunic is covering it. In between his legs there. They're cute. I 
and then just add a little bit of this color back into this the color you just used but it's a little darker it's almost a kelly green i guess you could say and we'll just put that in I'm going to go into the beard a little bit, and then when I do the beard, um, I could flick it into that green color. The ends. They're fun. Sleeve up here, same color. And then we'll add the uh, folds and wrinkles to it. some really dark green in here. He's got green around his um, beard too, just along the edge, the sideburns. <laughs> okay, so then we can get that green. Maybe add a touch of black to it, darken it. I want a nice dark green. And then along the edge of his hat, we can put in some of this. You can also put a little bit of uh, the color in between the light and the dark of this. But we'll put this in first and then go back over. With the uh, medium color, if that makes sense. A little bit dark in here. That. And a little bit on that line. That. There's a little bit of a wrinkle there. Then you just take a little bit of that uh, medium color again. Just kind of wet. A fairly wet consistency and just uh, kind of blend it into that background of the lighter color a little bit kind of like a soft shadow Okay, 
Okay, so let's take some dark green again. And in the real dark uh, edges, like in the armpit here, we'd have some really dark, dark darks. And he folds in his clothes here, but it would be fairly dark in here, so put quite a bit. to the beard even. Down in here, just underneath the beard would be shadowed from the beard. Let's put a little bit of that in there. This is very watered down. A little bit on the sleeve. Inside the sleeve there, there's a little area. And maybe just a little bit along the edge there. I'm going to make it a little bit more dark dark in here just where the little um, wrinkles are I'm just putting some of that of this in here so it's not on everything but it's under where the wrinkle would be Just want to make sure it's blended out just slightly. You could do this with a colored pencil again too. If it's um, a little too tricky for you, colored pencil got a little bit more control. And on the hat here, I think. Okay, he's cute. And let's put his face in. So I do have some flesh tone by um, Delta ceramic coat. Um, I think you can get one called High Flesh from Folk Art too. That'll work. I'm just going to paint the, basically the whole face in. That one wasn't shook enough. Let's see. There we go. Better. And 
I'm just going to put his whole face in this color. I'm just going to go right over top of his eyebrows. I'm not going to worry about it because we'll put those in later. Don't go over his, his um, beard though. And his eyes. Leave his eyes. The white of his eyes will well, I guess he doesn't really have a whole lot. It looks like it's mostly blue. But a fairly even coat on there. And it's small enough, you could probably do this with a colored pencil too if you wanted to. It's not that big of an area. And don't forget his ears. Little pointy ears. And his hands. And I'm going to color his um, shadows on his hands and face with colored pencil. Just easier. Got little stubby fingers. It's cute. Simple. And the bottoms of his shoes are brown. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to that brown and a little bit of white, maybe a black, that's better. It's kind of a greenish brown, but it's okay. And I'm going to paint the whole thing in this color and then we'll just do some line work. For the souls. You could also put um, a hole <laughs> in his shoe. He's got holes in his shoes. He wasn't a lucky leprechaun. Or he's too cheap. He didn't want to fix his shoes. He's hoarding that money. Cute. And he's got a little <laughs> curl on the top of his head. And it's brown. Um, so I'm just going to paint it this color. And then we'll use some magic, or not magic marker color pencil to put some line work in it. All right. Now his beard. Now I guess we could put his belt in too in this color. He 
need a little bit more. It's a bit too light. It's better. Okay. And Kathy, did you see my comment above about the Paul Rubin acrylics and colored pencil? No, I didn't. Someone mentioned it was down. I found the Paul Rubin acrylics I reviewed where were fairly flat and could use colored pencil or top somewhat. Okay, so they were a little on the flat. So kind of like a craft paint, that flat? Or did you find them um, not quite? I'm going to mix a little bit of yellow to this white for his beard. I'm just going to put this coat on. Um, I know I, I did do a review of a whole bunch of gouache paints to see what the um, tooth would be like as far as using colored pencils. And they were, some were different than others. I was actually quite surprised that there were some that, even though they were flat, they didn't take well with colored pencils, which was quite surprising. Um, I did uh, order some flat. It's called a folk art flat acrylic. And I want to see if that's any different. Because if it's uh, just as flat and thick as they're saying, then it would be great to be used as a gouache or craft paint. So it would be great for both and a whole lot cheaper. Um, fairly flat, but not ultra flat. Yeah, I would have to investigate where. The, yeah, see, the, um, and depending on what colored pencils you got, uh, there are differences. I'm just going to take some of this brown watered down. I'm just going to go on the very edge of his beard, wherever those lines are, and uh, put some of this marking in the brown. And again, you could do this with colored pencil. We'll just use a little bit of this, and then we'll get the colored pencil out. Let's put in um, a little bit of that color, because it's watered down. And I'm going to do a little bit of shading around his eyes. that and this side because this is the, the shaded side so that you would have shading on his face um, it's a little bit on just just a little bit around the cheek there and his ear would be fairly shaded inside. So let's put that in. And actually, we'll put this in like that. And a little bit on it. underneath his nose, of course, would be shaded. And he has a little ball on his nose. And a little bit of a like 
that. And we'll put some more shadows on there. A little bit more. In his nose. Just on the bottom. And right here. So he's got big cheeks. Here's his eyes a little bit on the top part of his hand here, his wrist will be shadowed, and just curve it down into his thumb. His thumb would be shadowed and down his middle finger or his index finger and and then just along the bottom part, because they're kind of curled. Actually, his hand's fairly shaded. Just dividing them. And this one, same thing. Like that. The inside of his thumb. And then bottoms of his fingers uh, and just up a little bit nothing crazy that and I think he's gonna have blue eyes so I'm just oh yeah I do have blue out okay so a little bit of blue on the top of his eye too much just wiped my brush in the green nope and he's got a green blob <laughs> green can't can't get rid of it Right, and then a little bit of white along the bottom. So I'm just gonna mix oop, too much water in my brush. And then back to the blue. I could do this with colored pencil probably a little easier. area. We got to give them cheeks too. So I have uh, peony pink or let's just use the red and the white. So I'll just mix a little bit of a pink. Does not need to be a whole lot. Just on his cheeks. And I want it watered down so I can blend it. So like that and then a little bit darker for his lips like that and then his ears the inside of his ears is a little bit darker so I'm just going to take that brown again and uh emphasize those lines or actually I could do a little bit of pink in there not much but a little bit in his ears and then we'll just uh, 
spruce it up with uh, color pencil. Hey, Kathy. Okay. Okay, and then we have stones. So let's make a little bit of black with white and these can be our flagstone he's sitting on. These are fun to do. I like doing these. I know they're they're very what you call it um, seasonal paintings, but I like doing them. They're fun. The rocks here and there. And get a little bit more black, darken that up a little bit, and then we can put some edgings on there. A little bit of dimension. So, a little bit darker in there. Let that dry. Um, maybe. Let's see if we need any other. Let's do some more green in there. Wherever you have some bare inner areas that need a little bit more color, just throw in some really watered down, uh, fairly light green, or well, you could go dark green too. But just here and there, just to... Because we will go over top of this again. So let's put a little bit in there. And being that it's really pale green, if you go over some of your uh, green leaves or whatnot, it's not going to show. But it just gives a little bit more cohesiveness. So you don't have to do um, so many small brush marks. It just helps. It's a quick way of uh, filling in when you need to. And you can mix up the color too if you want. Um, add a little more darker green to it. Or you could wait and do that later. So there'd be green in between the rocks here. Do that. And it makes them cute. Put back 
there. Just fills that in it for you. And then you can uh, do your highlighting or changing colors or whatever you want to do um, with colored pencil. Just here and there. Depends how uh, how uh, detailed you want to. You know, not everyone wants a whole lot of detail. So this one did take a little longer because there there was a lot of uh, things in it. Okay, so let's give that a dry and then we'll get out our colored pencils. Hi Joan, thanks for popping in. the top part up here. So I'm going to go into probably a sienna color. Yep, sienna brown. And just um, basically as a, a little areas where there would be a little bit more of a shadow here and there. See, so there's some kind of uh, cedar shake. gray, warm gray. It depends how much you want to play. Do uh, detail, you know, that type of thing. Uh, it's black. A little bit of black. In there.
you can add uh, more depth in your shading with this too. So I'll just do a few because it's get, starting to get uh, to be a long video. <laughs> but I'll show you what. Let's finish um, the L too. Uh, let's do a sienna color. And we'll do his eyes. So nostrils. Right in his ears, too, you can use this color, Sienna. Just give him a little bit of Been in his beard, or maybe even a softer yellow. Let's see. Or beigey color. Not quite as red. This one might do. We'll put some white in here too. And his eyelashes or his uh, eyebrows are actually green. <laughs> so let's do a green. dot for his pupil too and I'm going to put a little bit of a black uh, line for his eyelashes uh, maybe a little darker in here in his nose his nostrils there This is where I can get carried away, <laughs> as you know.
yeah, we were going to put That's too light. Let's see. Little rolls in his hair. <laughs> I think I'm going to use Posca and Sharpie. Hey, Lori. And I'm just going to wisp some of these. Just give them a little bit of curls in his hair. Twinkle in his eye. Yeah. Um, a little bit of um, Tear on his shoes. Uh, let's see. Maybe. Oh, yeah, we need a little bit. shadow on that Let's see in here a bit darker Green, green, green. Um, oh, this is dark enough. Let's see. Hmm. Not quite the color I want, but we'll make it work. Oh yeah, we were going to put little, um, I'm just going to do squiggles to make a pattern on his pants. You can make it whatever you want. Or you could just leave it, it doesn't have to be. That, and then you can take some, a little bit more of that. I just want to put some lines, shading in there. A little bit. And 
sent a little bit of green. in his beard on the bottom here. Like that. And white. White, white. It's a highlight on his nose. And his eye. Tops of his cheeks. Uh, maybe a little on his, the wrinkles of his. I don't think that. Uh, not bad. A little bit in there on his hat. His ear. And then I want to put a little bit of marks in the wood. Get a little bit darker here and there. Now you could go really crazy and do all kinds of, you know, shadows and highlights and whatever. Um, that's up to you whether you want to get that involved in it as far as you know detail which a lot of times what i do is i'll do it to a certain point and then i'll finish it later for uh, as far as streaming because um a lot of people that watch are really into the full detail thing <laughs> realistic detail but it's up to you but i will have to go shortly dogs are wanting to eat now you can take your poscas too and uh, make your grasses uh, or you could use your colored pencil um, let's see if I got a let's see let's dark green here Just some or poscas if you're going to be going over and you want a, a really dark or opaque color then use poscas and then you can uh, have it go over the darker areas sometimes it won't work as far as uh, going over uh, dark colors with a colored pencil Sometimes you do have to get those Poscas out. Wish this guy lived in my garden. <laughs> He's cute, isn't he? Um, let's see, greens. I'll get the greens out and show you. Or you could take a liner brush if you wanted to use a liner too. You could do that. 
This one isn't even opened. Let's do this one first. So, say I wanted a bit of grass going over his boots, whatever. It gives it a different effect. You do your um, Uh, see, I can't talk when I get into stuff. This is why I like doing um, pre premieres, then I I can think properly. <laughs> You could use this also for um, making your veining. These remind me of uh, uh, nasturtium. I don't know what they're supposed to be, but... Uh, that's what they remind me of. So just play. Play, play, play. That's what I like. See what you can do. Always add the same color in other areas of your painting so it looks cohesive. You don't want it a whole new color, just smack dab somewhere and then not use it anywhere else. Because it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb then. I think I had some flowers in here too. So this way I can go over top and fill in. We could make little squiggles if you wanted to. You don't have to be anything recognizable. If you have a bunch of different greens, that would be great. You could go into yellows too. Um, like that. Do some more squiggles. And then maybe let's see what other color we got here. Yellow maybe. Pink flower. Some yellow. white you could do white too little bits of yellow sticking out here and there daisies. So let's put some English daisies in. So maybe right here. 
little dabs, some dots. Maybe some in here. Don't know what they are, but it could be whatever you want. You could make different colored ones. You could do blue for um, blue belts. Uh, maybe a few in here. Maybe they got them in their little house here. Stick some right in there. That's cute. The little touches here and there. That looks cute. Yeah. Okay. I think she, I think he's done. I think he looks cute. Oh no! I got to do his thing. Uh, gold. So let's do some gold. Oh, there's one. I knew I had one. You can't have him him paint. What? <laughs> I don't get that one. Let's put gold. She's got a some kind of a insignia of some sort. It belongs to some kind of leprechaun society. Not sure what. We'll do the gold. Well, it's got to be gold, right? We could actually put some gold coins in, too. Oh, and the gold. G for gold. <laughs> it's all about the gold. That's cute. He wouldn't have gold laying around because they just wouldn't. All right, I think I'm done. What's that? All right, there he is. So if you want, you can uh, download the printable for this. It's on the membership pages on Instagram or on Facebook for all levels and have some fun with it. Use your colored pencils, watercolor, whatever you want to do with it. And this was just Bristol paper. So have fun with it and uh, have a fantastic weekend, everyone. Hopefully it'll be nice for you. You're welcome, Devin. Okay. Have a fantastic day, everybody. Bye, Dorothy. And we'll see you next week on Tuesday at 1 o'clock Eastern. Bye for now.